Hey guys, how's it going? Mega Gears here. So I uh, picked up some back issues of Mike Grell's run on Green Arrow. Now I know Green Arrow is not a popular DC character. Uh, I think what's really added his popularity is him being a supporting character in the Smallville TV show and later getting his own TV show on the CW, which um, after the first two seasons, I kind of just lost interest. Season three was okay because you got Ra's al Ghul. Um, the TV show really made him Batman. And for a while, a lot of Green Arrow fans um, were getting pissed off about the show. And I was just like, uh, they're just, you know, angry fanboys or whatever. Until I decided to start reading Green Arrow myself because people were saying, oh, these characters are different from the comics and all this stuff. And I was like, well, let me see for myself. And I got to say, the TV show makes him Batman with a bow and arrow and takes some very loose um, you know, things from the comics and kind of adapts it. And that's about it. It's a very loose adaptation of the comics. And for those that haven't really read Green Arrow, I haven't been too crazy about Benjamin Percy's run. I actually dropped the book. I think what made me stay for a good while was Mike Grell uh, returned to do the covers and Otto Schmidt's art. The dude draws an amazing Black Canary. Like, dude, kills it. His art was really cool. It had this interesting kind of cartoon-ish art to it, but I don't know, it just worked for the book. It looked different from other DC titles. And when he left, they got some other guy, and uh, I, I forget what his name is, but I, I wasn't too crazy about it. And the story really wasn't, it wasn't doing it for me. But I ended up going back and reading uh, Mike Grell stuff. And my goodness, it's really good. Um, for someone that wanted to get into it, I would probably suggest reading Long Bow Hunters. That's um, a mini series that came out in like 87. And because it was so successful, uh, DC let him get like an ongoing run. I think he, he did the first, maybe like, I don't know, 35, 40 issues, maybe more than that. And then later, um, another guy came on to do the pencils, and Mike Grell continued writing it. So originally, he wrote it and did the pencils and inks, I believe, in the covers. Later on, he just was the writer, and they had other fill-in artists. But it works so well because, I don't know about you guys, but my understanding of Green Arrow, my first um, you know, introduction to him was really the Justice League animated TV series. That was my introduction to a lot of stuff. That's how I learned about a lot of these DC characters, even the real fringe ones like Red Tornado and the Huntress and, you know, a lot of other characters. The Question, who I'm a big fan of. I've only read some of the stuff from the 80s run um, because it's so hard to find this out of print. But yeah, Green Arrow is really cool in there because him and his relationship with um, Laurel was, uh, was it Dinah Prince? was a Laurel Prince. I get him confused because Dinah Prince was also a Black Canary from the Golden Age, I think, and Laurel uh, Prince was... I, I, I think I get him flip-flop. But anyway, Black Canary had an interesting relationship because Oliver Queen is kind of your witty, sarcastic guy. You know, he, he uses his wit and humor to kind of, def, you know, deflate certain situations, but he's a guy that's kind of been through some stuff. He's a bit brooding at times, especially the way they do him in the uh, Mike Grell's run, it's interesting because it's very grounded. It's it's actually pretty dark. It's one of those things where if you read Chuck Dixon's Nightwing, you know how everything else is kind of dark, but the characters are pretty lighter. I mean, Nightwing's pretty lighthearted for the most part, the characters they meet, but the world that they, they live in and inhabit, you know, as in the dark uh, Nightwing's um, hometown, what was it Bloodhaven, was where he went to go fight crime. In Seattle, which this is where it takes place, it's not Starling City, and the Mike Grell's run. It's in Seattle, so those are some things. Uh, but it's pretty grounded because he's really there's no. Were there any superpower beings? If there was, it was very, very um, rare. It was kind of used sparingly, or to be hinted at. Most of the times, it was him dealing with. Um, I guess people like to call it Green Era SJW. He's really not. He's just kind of the guy that looks out for the, the uh, you know, the little guy and everything. He ends up, you know, taking down hustlers, pimps, smugglers, um, drug dealers, like stuff like that. He ends up running missions 
for the CIA and all that. Normally because they blackmail him into doing it or he owes them because they helped him out and he does it begrudgingly. Him and his relationship with uh, Dinah is pretty interesting because this version of Oliver Queen, he's not the young one that you see in Rebirth. He's in his early, he's like 44. It's funny because they make a big deal about it. He's like, I'm getting old and all this type of stuff. But it does a really good job of humanizing him. It has quite a bit of action. It's it's a bit more graphic. I mean, it's not extremely bloody or anything, but, I mean, people do get arrows through them. There are scenes where people get shot in the head and, you know, stuff like that. And you're like, oh, oh okay. There are consequences. Um, Oliver doesn't always win. And Shadow, who got butchered in the Arrow TV show. Like, when I read the comic, I was like, dude, they ruined her. In the original run in the Longbow Hunters, that's when you first get introduced to her. She's actually um, an assassin for the Yakuza, and she ended up getting sold in to helping the Yakuza from a child because her dad had died or something like that. And uh, it was a blood oath or a debt that had to be paid. And it's kind of like this crossover where she ends up taking down guys that have hits ordered on them. Oliver Queen uh, gets framed for it. Because, you know, like, who else do we know runs around with bows and arrows with a hood? Green Arrow. And Oliver Queen's identity, it's one of those things where he tries to keep it a secret identity, but people kind of find out. So it's its kind of like people know Oliver Queen's Green Arrow, but it, no one really talks about it. It's, it's, it's interesting. But uh, Shadow's a really cool character. Uh, Dinah Prince, some people might not have liked what they've done with her because she doesn't have her, like, super-powered voice. Her, um... Her, her sonic scream for whatever reason something happened and she was injured and she couldn't use it so you can tell micro really wanted this to be a more grounded vigilante based book instead of a superhero comic but yeah guys if you want to get in the green arrow i would suggest try picking up the trays i think dc comics did like a a, a collection of the 75 uh issues or something crazy like that and i'm pretty sure you can find trades and um, runs you can pick up longbow hunters. I mean, you can pick it up in Comicsology if you want, or find some back issues some places. Like for me, I found some in the discount bin for a couple bucks. So yeah, um, let me know if any of y'all are interested in the current Green Arrow run, or if y'all watched the TV show, which I thought about that, or in general, what was your first introduction into the, uh, the Green Arrow ca- character and Black Canary and all that. And I will catch you on the next.